everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today on Houston Life. On this Tuesday, April 28th, Courtney, it also happens to be National Superhero Day. I know. How are you? I love National Superhero Day. And um, what I think is, I mean, it's like, the, it sounds like I wait for that. I, I'm National impressed that you even knew year, right? what that it was. It's kind of a silly thing to say. <laughs> <It> was... <laughs> I love National oh Superhero Day. I'm Can really we into over? Superhero. Can we, we roll the open? <laughs> no, we're live. There are no do-overs. You actually Woo! knew that it was National Superhero Day? I had no idea. <laughs> I wait all year for this. It reminds me of um, growing up, my, my childhood best friend and I, Amy, we lived across the street from each other, and we would just play Wonder Woman every single day. We would, you know, have our bracelets, we would make them out of <laughs> aluminum foil and put it on our wrists and drive our invisible plane. That was our thing. That's what we did on Chestnut Lane that in Oak is Forest, so Illinois. Cool. Well, listen, while you were busy doing uh, the tinfoil thing on your wrists on Chestnut Lane, I was on 2300 East in in Salt Lake City and I wanted to be Wonder Woman too because any TV show that had special effects granted when you look back at these old yeah. Wonder Woman episodes they it's <laughs> the special effects are maybe <laughs> a little bit questionable the special effects but remember how she would turn around <laughs> and change into her Wonder Woman outfit yes. that was such a good show so Amazing. I thought that if I just you know spun around a lot that maybe I could also turn into Wonder Woman or someone with magical powers turns out it just made me very very dizzy in fact today still I'm a little bit dizzy all these decades later I love that you reckon it to Wonder Woman because you know Superman did the same thing, but he just popped into the telephone booth, right? But you got to you got to go with Wonder Woman, Derek. That's I true. I like where you're going. I was also a fan of Superman, but remember the the later Superman with Dean Cain and Terry Hatcher? So it was like the updated yeah. version of Superman. There would have mm -hmm. been so many different people playing Superman that frankly it's a bit confusing now. In all of the latest films, I don't know who Terribly Superman confusing. actually is, but we all know yeah. there's just one. Wonder Woman. Although they did do an update, but Linda Carter, Linda Carter mm -hmm. is still the OG. OG, baby. And by the way, a shout out to all of our superheroes that are surrounding us all today. The frontline workers, the emergency personnel, mm -hmm. the nurses, the doctors, they are the true real life superheroes of today. Yeah, without question. And as we were chatting yesterday, Courtney, on the show about this mask order being in place now where we live, anytime you're in public, you've got to wear a mask, right? It just, again, is so much respect for the people who every day are suiting up. You know, they're putting on their body armor and their face coverings and the, and the whole bit uh, to try to guard against this invisible virus. So hats off to them. They really are the true superheroes. A hundred percent. And it's a great segue into today's artist because I want you to take a look at my home studio HL graphic. And this is done by 12 year old Jay. She's a seventh grader from Katy, Texas. And she and her grandmother are actually big fans of Houston life. And Jay loves to draw. And she just wants to tell everybody to stay safe, spread hope. We love Houston life and Jay and to your grandma, we love you too, and stay safe, and thanks for sending this in. Isn't that awesome? It's beautiful. It's really, really nice. It's also nice how that that piece of art sort of marks a moment in time, right? I feel like the time True. when we all get mm -hmm. beyond this and we look back to the stay-at-home order and wearing the mask and all of that, it really is this memorable snapshot in history. We're all going to remember COVID-19. Uh, so that art will be a nice little reminder down the road. Absolutely, I know. So what else is new? You know what's so funny is um, Orlando and I were chatting about we need to add into our kids' homeschooling curriculum is we're going to bring back home economics. We are bringing back how to take out the trash, how to clean a toilet, how to like, you know, pick something up off the ground. You know, I realized that my two kids have a hard time finding the garbage can. What? I thought that was... Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. not going to... Why? They I know. Don't... I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But I mean, because we're all together all the time. But, like, we are... Um, we're, we're giving them a crash course in cleaning the bathroom. That's happening this week. 
yeah, it is that's, happening. That's something that we all should be doing. I mean, we we clean our own house, oh. we clean our own toilets, we do all of that. Anyone who says like they're too yeah. too good to clean up their own toilet makes me wonder what they're compensating for. That just mm -mm. sounds a little snobby to me. Um, we should all know mm. how to clean our own toilets and scrub our own showers. Yeah, I mean that's part of being human, Absolutely. right? You do the laundry, you clean the house. Isn't that what people do? Yeah. Uh, yes, <laughs> it's what we all do. Okay, well, absolutely. Well, I want documented proof but apparently, that your boys have have trouble uh, getting to the trash can. It's a bit alarming. <laughs> I mean, there's lots of things happening here, but you know what's so funny is like there was this poll, and they, you know, you know how we always talk about these people and these polls, and we're always wondering like who's doing the polls, who's participating in the polls. But apparently, there's this poll that went around, and about 2,000 American drivers were polled by one poll, and they, these people said one in four people would rather clean their toilet than their car. <laughs> Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think so because cleaning the toilet is a very basic thing, right? Like you put the toilet bowl cleaner on, you let it sit it's for easy. a minute, and then you use your scrubber. I will say yeah. it is sometimes frightening when you look into other people's cars. You know, you park in a parking lot and you see the person's car next to you. Some people keep so much stuff in their cars. Right now, I will admit, I do have yes. a trunk full of items that I need to take to Goodwill or the thrift store to drop off because we've been doing so much spring cleaning. We have a lot to give away. But typically, right. I like to have nothing in the car. And if Brandon has been driving my car and he even has a little wrapper, like a straw wrapper that he's left in the door, Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, why are you leaving trash in my car? Granted, it's a small little item, but I like a clean car. And over the past month, it's been tricky because car Me washes too. have been closed. And, you know, not that mm -hmm. it's a big deal, but it's just an adjustment to make. I look forward to the time when my car is clean again. What do you think? Would you rather scrub the toilet than clean your car? Because I can understand why people would say they would. Yeah, I mean, but I, I like, I want both to be clean. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm not cleaning one over the other. I'm cleaning both. So, I mean, I don't know. You, you know, you're in your, well, we're not in our cars every day. At least I'm not. I mean, you're still going into the studio, right? So you're in your car a little bit more um, than, than somebody else, right? But, I mean, you see your toilet every day. You got to clean that. I don't know why you're picking one over the other, to be honest. <laughs> You know, that is a very, very good point. It is a very good point. <laughs> Cleaning your, your toilet is, is probably a lot faster than cars. And especially the inside, under the seats. Right. Yeah, people's cars, it can be, it can be tough. The struggle is real. But it, it, I do think that the car clean out. <sighs> the struggle's real. It's, Houston is, I've lived in different regions of these great United States. And I have to say, with the, the spring allergy season and all the pollen that comes down and also with the pollution in the air, yes. so, you know, a, a quick rainstorm can make your car <clears throat> so dirty because then all of, all of the dirt on your car and all of the pollen seems to clump up. Very true point, I know. I don't know. I, I'd say get one of those like hand back things. It's easy to get the, you know what drives me nuts is like the rolling of the bo water bottles. So, you know, somebody leaves a water bottle in your car or things are just kind of, I, that drives me nuts. I cannot deal. <laughs> wow. Well, it's, uh, don't worry. Know, Something tells me to you're going to get through it. Today. Isn't it interesting? We all have our pet peeves. We have been hearing from some of our viewers so far today about the things that they would never do no matter how bored they get at home. That's sort of our question of the day, if you want to call it that. So weigh in on our Facebook page because we are always loving your comments that you submit. And we're curious about what you are doing or rather not doing at home. Uh, during this extra time at home. And Courtney, something that we were chatting about in the office today from across the distance, the two people who are actually here with me today, they were talking about this trend. <laughs> I didn't think this was a real thing. I, I, I could have sworn this was made up, but a lot of different outlets are reporting on this, and apparently there's proof. People are naming their babies after coronavirus. It is happening. It's happening. So this is no, <laughs> in uh, regions around the world. There are stories coming out of the Philippines and India reporting names like COVID Marie. Okay. The parents of COVID Marie. No, this was we're reported not doing that. by the International Business Times. Parents say the name is to inspire and give hope to others. 
COVID Marie to inspire and give hope to others? Mm. I mean, okay, so ev with every, you know, um, event, I think that there's always this chance that people are going to, you know, name their child something, but like, this is kind of a downer, right? I mean, it's kind of, it's catastrophic. There's death attached to it. There's sickness attached to it. I don't know. I'm not buying this one. I mean, what's the next one? Rona? Are we naming, I mean. Well, twins named COVID and Corona. Twins named COVID and Corona, mm -mm. reported by HuffPost. Family names no. baby Sanitizer, as reported by Newsweek. Father says the name is their family's, quote, contribution to the fight against coronavirus. Sanitizer protects us from the virus. Baby will take on those qualities. <laughs> that can't be I real. Mean, Please tell me that. Okay. <laughs> Can you imagine I, baby there sanitizer? There was like this joke on, on going on. No, this is crazy. Welcome, so baby. I thought this was like total joke because <laughs> I know right on the birth, birth announcement. Didn't I send this to you, Derek? I think it was like the roll call for like, you know, the class roll call in 2020 or, in, uh, you know, in 20 years from now, uh, 2040 or something like that, where they were saying, and it was all the names, Corona, Quarantino, Quarantina, like all, and it was a joke. It was a comic. So now yeah. I, I guess the joke is now a reality. But coronavirus or not, we've, we've all like heard a few names over the decades that have sort of raised our eyebrows, right? <laughs> yeah. I have a few more if you want to hear them. This is definitely... <laughs> yeah, let me hear more. Okay, so a couple named their baby Lockdown, reported by the New York Post. Father said the name will remind their family of this important time. And last on the list... For now, I'm sure the list is much longer than we have time for on the show today. Family named their newborn COVID Bryant. Sort of a nod to not only coronavirus, but the late Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know. I don't know what to say about this. I don't know. <laughs> I... I this is no. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the line on this one. Please it is, don't. It is sort of it is sort of interesting too. You know the name association thing. I think is a is a really big deal because whether it's meeting your future spouse or or naming your baby, we have positive associations with names, right? So if you know someone with a specific name and that person was horrible yes. to you, somehow that name is tainted, right? For Yes. For life. But then, I mean, there have been names that I can't stand because of people who are awful to me. But then I meet someone with the same name and I think, oh my gosh, well, you know, that, that name is not horrible. I, I can get over that. So it really is interesting right. during, during a pandemic like coronavirus or other world events, how names become either more popular or, or less popular. Like the Amazon Echo, we all call her yeah. Alexa, and that name has from what I understand, definitely become a little less popular than it used to be because now we think of that name, which I won't say again, sorry people at home if your girl is going off, but people have come to associate that name now with an that, electronic though? device. Yeah, do, do people still use it though? I unplugged mine. I don't know why you unplugged yours. Do you still use it? Yes, we use oh, ours no. every single day. She turns off the lights, she does all kinds of things. My mom uses one, it plays music. Courtney, there are a lot of great things that these devices can do. But I turn off the lights. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> it just takes so much time. What about you? Has there ever been a name that is, that just, I, I don't know, it sticks with you? Like if we get a hate mail from a viewer or a really angry voicemail, sometimes I'll remember the name and be like, oh, can't deal with someone with that name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a few of them that I remember. So I, 
I remember, um, you know, when I was pregnant and before I knew we were having boys, you know, you have like your list of names. And so for me, I think the boy names were a little bit easier to come up with. The girl names, it was, you know, Orlando would say, I don't remember what they were right now, but, you know, he would say a name and I'd be like, oh, no, not that one. She was horrible. Or she, you know, like you just, you do, you associate a name with a memory. And, um, or I don't know, I, I mean, there's a lot to a name. So I, I feel like when you have the pressure of, of naming someone, and quite honestly, when you're talking about this pandemic, like I said, it's associated with sickness and death and yeah. struggle. I don't know why you would want that constant reminder, you know? Yeah. I would want like unicorns and butterflies. <laughs> well, those those are great names as well. It's funny, when my sister Elizabeth was expecting a baby, I think it was the youngest, Samantha, the older girls had come up with names like Unicorn and Caterpillar and and Sparkle. I think, I think one of the right. names was actually Unicorn Sparkle. First name Unicorn, middle name Sparkle. So... Heck, if if it the, works, it, it it totally works, and I agree with you that this <clears throat> COVID time, I'm not sure if uh, we're, we're all going to remember it. Of course, right? We'll remember COVID of 2020, but to name someone, I don't know, five years from now in a kindergarten classroom somewhere, they're going to be doing roll, roll call and. COVIDs around the world are going to be raising yeah. their hands. We'll, we'll see about that. All right, let's get to what's Present. coming up on today's <laughs> show. Keep Buzz to the Rescue. This is a project started by a local teen and his family. So they set out to help out, had the idea to turn these extra kippas into face masks. Of course, kippa is the Hebrew word. You've heard yarmulke, which is the Yiddish word. And they're taking them, turning them into face masks donated by a local synagogue named Brit Shalom. They donated more than 600 yarmulkes for the project so far. And the family, as they have completed these masks, they have been donating them to homeless folks in downtown Houston. What a great way to give back, Courtney. I love this story so much. I can't wait to hear more about it. Also, I know so many of us are looking for some crafting ideas and this pottery painting kit to go is so cool. We've all been to these stores where you go in and you paint your pottery and then when you're done, they put it in the kiln, they fire it for you. Well, Color Me Not Mine is now offering this kit with everything you need to paint a ceramic masterpiece at home. You do this at home and then you drop it off at the store for them to finish it and with the fire Glaze. It's a great idea for the kids for Mother's Day gifts. I have one of these from years ago. It's such a great idea. So more on that coming up. Yeah, it really is is a fantastic idea just ahead of Mother's Day. So if you're still searching for ideas, folks, you might want to consider this one. But before we get to that, let's talk about the temperatures outside. They're already heating up. And before we all know it, summer will be here. So now is the time to get your home ready before the rush. What you need to know to improve your home's air quality coming up next. Well, it's time now for our Tip Tuesday. That's our new money-saving tip from our uh, one-hour air conditioning and heating of Houston. Whether you live in an apartment, townhome, or single-family home, there are many ways to protect and improve your indoor air quality. Causes of poor indoor air quality include sources that release gases or particles into the air. Also, inadequate ventilation that blocks fresh outdoor air from coming into the home and indoor air pollutants from going out. Add the high temperatures and humidity we have here in Houston, and we all know there could be problems. Joining us today to answer questions about how we can all have cleaner and safer air in our homes, General Manager of One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating of Houston, Jimmy Sanchez. Jimmy, welcome to the show, and it is so true. Everyone knows what it's like when we sort of transition into that time when we need to have our systems running on full 24 7. so first of all let's talk about just why air quality inside the home is so important well absolutely well thank you for having me again my name is jimmy sanchez of one hour ac so absolutely the indoor air you know the cdc uh targets four different areas of pollutants in your home uh, the, the one of the ones you mentioned was your bacteria, viruses and germs uh, we also have our dust allergens and, and uh, dust and allergens. And then we also have your uh, toxic odors and gases. So all those things are being uh, traveling through your home and 
having indoor air quality can definitely enhance uh, your air quality to have that cleaner, fresher, healthier air that you're having in your home. And the there other, seems uh, to be, you know, when you do have a problem inside, there's no relief from any of the allergies that you're dealing with outside. So let's talk about the options that are available. I know my son has allergies. I do, too. So I'm really curious about this. Yes, there's definitely many things out there in the markets. One of our top performing uh, products that we have that our customers really, really enjoy is called the Oxy Quantum Triple Remote. It uses two different types of UV lights. The first one is a UVC, and it targets that area that I mentioned earlier with bacteria, viruses, and germs. And the second type of bulb is a UVV light, which targets your toxic odors and gas. Things that cause that would be things simple like carpets. Carpets emit chemicals and odors, your paints, your Glade plug-ins, your aerosols that you have. So all these things are flowing through your home, and these UV lights can help uh, you know, to, to sterilize and neutralize these things. So the way it works in our system by having these different types of light bulbs is all your air is drawn into one area of the home called a return. And as it passes through your system, we have two different light bulbs that are sitting there scrubbing these uh, two different types of uh, areas that we talked about. So it forces the air through there, it's passing through there and it's sterilizing and neutralizing all of that air as it goes through so it gives you the relief from the allergies uh, and the protection against the the uh, bacteria, viruses and germs that we mentioned so uh, and of course we want to think of uh, our uh, indoor air quality kind of like um, what we talk about is uh, purified water or filtered water right you know most people in their homes have some sort of filtration so same thing with our air we want to make sure that our air in our in our homes is filtered to get us that cleaner fresher healthier air and Jimmy, Courtney mentioned her allergies and her family's issues that she experiences at home. I know a lot of Houstonians are in this situation. A lot of people think about uh, just a regular air filter that they, they know they need to replace. People probably don't replace them as often as they probably should. But what you're saying is, in many cases, simply replacing the air filter at home might not be enough? That's correct. So what you want to have is some sort of high efficiency filter. What I have behind me is two different types. We have an electronic air cleaner and we have a MERV 13, a high efficiency filter. So part of their job is to trap all those particles that are floating through the air. All those items that I mentioned earlier, whether they're bacteria, viruses, pollens, or any of those items, they all have a size to them. And these high efficiency filters are rated uh, to trap those particles. But without getting lost in there, there's also another important part of using a high efficiency filter. They are, they are designed to work with your systems, meaning that all of our AC systems are designed to have an airflow uh, that meets a manufacturer's requirements. And these high efficiency filters, they don't cause any restriction uh, you know, to slow that airflow down. So the, the high efficiency traps all those particles without slowing down the air uh, so that our indoor air feels uh, comfortable for us. Jimmy, what I think is so great is that you all have been serving the community for over 50 years, and I think that's that's trusted, it's true, it's great, and I think when people are talking about upgrading the air quality in and around their home, they want someone that they can trust and go over these issues because um, sometimes people feel like they're, they're getting taken advantage of, and that's what you guys stand behind. You're a small business, and you take care of Houston. Yes, absolutely. Trust goes a long way with us. Being here for uh, for over 50 years serving our customers, you know, not only do we have customers that have been with us for over 40 years, we have employees that have been with us for over 40 years. And that says a lot, you know, uh, that, that not only employees and customers stay with one company because we do stand for trust. We want to make sure we get it right. There is one thing that we do when we go into a home, uh, we want to make sure that we give you a full diagnosis of everything going on. So our technicians are going to spend a lot of time uh, looking at the entirety of your home, uh, making sure that they look at everything and they're going to sit down and take the time to educate you on each one of those items uh, that, that is a concern in your home so that 
as you move forward, you can figure out how you want to best attack those to make sure the indoor air quality of your home is 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 definitely where you want it to be. And you mentioned a longtime uh, community partner here. You know, one of the things that we also find it very important is to serve our community. So we take part in a lot of things. We we operate with the uh, Camp Hope or PTSD uh, mm -hmm. of America. Mm -hmm. We take care of all their HVAC needs at no cost. We 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 love to go out there and interact with our veterans. Uh, we take with recruit military, uh, with the combined arms network. Uh, so with a lot of veteran intervention, not only that, but we also like to take part with our Texas Children's Hospital. So being part of the community for such a long time, we want to feel like we're tied in with them. So absolutely. And Jimmy, we're out of time, but before we let you go, tell us about this $100 special you have. I, it's really easy. All people have to do is like you on Facebook to get 100 bucks off any of your indoor air quality products. Yes, absolutely. We all know that social media is the way of the future. Uh, so we're trying to grow our Facebook page. You get to learn and meet us. We have our own little stories out there. We're putting out the get to know us on there. So just go on there and like us and we'll we'll search you out and find you the next time we visit you. And we'll go ahead and take that $100 off your next uh, indoor air quality products. All right. Very easy. Just search one hour air and heat Houston on Facebook. Jimmy Sanchez, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks to uh, to your company as well for helping us all breathe. Breathe a bit healthier and cleaner. And in the meantime, if you'd like to learn more, you can visit their website, onehourhoustonac.com, or you can call 844-1-HOUR. And again, be sure to like them on Facebook to get that special offer, 100 bucks off indoor air quality products at One Hour Air and Heat Houston. Jimmy Sanchez, thanks again. Thank you. We'll be right back. And welcome back. And of course, we love hearing from all of our viewers on our social platforms. And Darren wrote in on Facebook saying that playing Monopoly is going to happen. It always ends in a fight. Oh, dear. I love it. <laughs> oh, okay. Competitive family. It's a classic game. Good luck there, Darren. And uh, Janie wrote in saying she's organizing her filing cabinet. It can wait a little longer. Oh, my. That's one of those things that... A lot of us, you know, if we are a procrastinator, it's hard to get to that file cabinet. I say go digital, try to just scan everything. Paper, we've tried to eliminate paper from our house and still we have paper. It's like an, an endless battle. I love it. I love her picture too with the Lysol can. Uh, Judy wrote in saying a DIY house remodeling project disaster waiting to happen. Oh boy. Well, now's the time to do it, girl. Get after it. I <laughs> love it. That's true. And please send photos. We want to know how that goes, Judy. Good luck. Jerry wrote in saying she's doing the <laughs> ironing. Okay. Very, very nice. You know, we, we still don't actually have a full-size ironing board. Oh, these are things she's not going to do. She's not going to be ironing. Listen, we don't blame you. At our house, we don't even own a full-size ironing board, Courtney. We have one of the mini ones from Ikea. That's we sort of do. a tabletop. It, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's not very functional, but we just, you know, if I look a little extra wrinkled once in a while, that explains it. You'll know why. It happens. No one's ironing now anyway. We're not wearing stuff that we need to be ironed, right? That's true. <laughs> you know what I've always said? One of the great things about living in Houston <laughs> is you can take a wrinkled shirt, put it on, go outside in the humidity, and suddenly... Wrinkles totally no fine. more. I know. I know. It's like that wrinkle release. Yeah. Hey, my money saving tip for the day. No more this wrinkle release because, you know, you're breathing in those extra allergens, right? Just get a spray bottle of water. It works just as well. Spray it down. The wrinkles are gone. It All right, great. folks. <laughs> after the break on Houston Life, keep us to the rescue. How one local family is turning keep us into face masks for those in need. We'll have that story next. Welcome back. We do want to let you know quickly that we are experiencing some severe weather around the greater Houston area. KPRC Channel 2's Justin Stapleton is streaming live right now on Facebook to help keep us all informed and will, of course, update you on air as well as the situation evolves. And Courtney, before I walked into Studio B, it's one of those days where outside the clouds kind of roll in and suddenly it feels like nighttime. Yeah. I know it is so dark and I can see out my window here too. It's it's about to start raining here. But in the meantime, we do want to tell you about something. This is such a great story. We love spotlighting how Houstonians are helping other neighbors during this challenging time. Our next story is a true example of how even the smallest gesture 
can make such a huge impact. It is really great. A local teen started brainstorming ways he could help those in need, and he came up with a creative idea using what he already had at home, a Jewish kippah. Hi, I, I'm Matthew Jason. I am a 15-year-old and a sophomore at the Audi, Audi International School. And I've been working on this Keep to the Rescue project for about a month now, and it's been going great. This one is from my bar mitzvah a couple of years ago. And this one is from my parents' wedding. So the whole idea came about um, in March. My family and I were going to sit down for Shabbat dinner, which is like the day of the Sabbath, and, you know, we all eat as a family. And so... Um, my, my, my family and I were discussing what to do about the, about the coronavirus and the whole situation. And I saw a keeper and I was like, this kind of fits also along the face as kind of a mask. And that's where it really started. And we kind of started out to work right after that. Like, we have a video on YouTube under my channel, uh, Knife and Jason, and we titled it Keepers at the Rescue. And it teaches you how to make them yourself if you want to. So here's the idea we came up with. So you take a keeper, preferably these larger made of like fabric and cloth kind of ones because they're a bit easier to use. And you also need an elastic band, which is six and a half inches. This is what the final product will look like. And you put it on. I have two older brothers and we've all gone through our bar mitzvahs and so we also have to go to a lot of bar mitzvahs. And so we have, we, we had about 80. And so we're like, huh, this is good. And we're part of Congregation for Shalom here in Houston. And so we made a box and we put it out front. This is my synagogue in Houston, Texas. And we're gonna go check the box. And every week or so we go and look at the donations and there's people have put a lot in. Because of the donations we've gotten, more than 650, and it's insane. And we got a couple loose ones too. We are currently donating these masks to the homeless people of Houston because we are finding that they are the definitely most vulnerable in the situation currently. Like they don't really have a place to stay. A lot of the time, it's difficult for them. And so we've been working with a, an organization called Food Not Bombs for many years now. And we said, you know, this would be the perfect place to give it out. And so we we always try to make 100 keepers per week or so, and then. We donate. We've made about 300 so far in the past couple, like month or so. It feels really good. It's like it's it's a little bit of like an empowering feeling. Like I am out there doing the best I can, trying to help the world. If you like this idea, I hope that you can do the same in your community and make more keepers to the rescue. Wow, that is absolutely fantastic. What an admirable uh, team there so working awesome. with his family to do that, Courtney. Very inspiring, right, that people are taking this time to actually do something to give back and get creative. You know, and I love the fact that um, it's it, we're focusing on young people that really get what we're all going through as a community and 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 these are young kids that could be doing something else and i think it's awesome um that we're shining a spotlight on uh what is happening in our community and by the way we do have a link to learn more on our website you can go watch this again it's houstonlife.tv and kudos because that is such a great story happy to spread the spotlight on them very well done and after the break there is still a market to buy homes in these unprecedented times find out how you can still sell yours next. Welcome back. If you are looking for a way to get cash selling that property you no longer like or want to live in, maybe it's time to move. Even during the COVID-19 pandemic, you have options. Joining us now with more details are Eddie Gant and Ricky Williams Jr. with Home Vesters Franchise, your local We Buy Ugly Houses people. Guys, welcome to the show. I know a lot of folks have seen your signs out there, We Buy Ugly Houses. First of all, let's just jump in. You guys are still out there despite the current circumstances. You are out there ready to make offers on people's homes. Uh, that is correct. We're still active. Uh, matter of fact, it's been pretty brisk for us. Uh, home Festers is America's number one home buyer. We've we've never slowed up during this during this challenging time. Um, you know, we've got about 1,100 franchises across the U.S. still buying. We have a great team locally here in Houston. Uh, you know, we've had to change a little bit how we do business a little bit. We're we're doing a lot of virtual appointments now. Uh, we can still come out to the house in person, but you know what it's done for us is changes from from 100% in home to now we do a lot of virtual. But we're still open for business here in Houston. Um, we're we're plugging along. We've been here active since about 1997. We haven't slowed up. That's fantastic news because I know a lot of companies who do similar things have put all their buying on hold. Uh, Eddie and Ricky, let's chat a little bit about what you're seeing in the real estate industry right now as far as safety measures during COVID-19. 
Well, as far as safety is concerned, you know, historically and traditionally, real estate has been a very in-person type interaction. And with the use of technology, essentially what we're doing right here, we're able to view the houses prior to actually coming out and having that first interaction. So we're doing Zoom meetings, we're doing FaceTime calls. Uh, we're doing, if they don't have access to that, then we can do pictures or uh, pre-recorded video and then actually meet at the house for an exterior inspection to make sure that the, the uh, market is good for what we're trying to get into. Um, as far as in-person visits, where we can, we are leaving that up to the sellers. We're allowing them to dictate where their comfort level is. Uh, of course, social distancing and you know proper PPE. Um, we're making those same things happen and, and getting offers same day. And it seems like the, the big takeaway here, guys, is that if someone is in a position where they want to sell their home or they really need to sell their home, they can still do so. What are you guys seeing just in terms of sales and volume? Because obviously Houston, we're the fourth largest city in the United States. And despite COVID-19 and the fact that more people have been staying home and working from home, a lot of people still might need to move and sell their homes. Sure. I think there's people that are wanting to sell their homes and there's people that are coming from other parts of the country to Houston that want to buy homes. So there's Houston's always been a traditionally stable marketplace and the ability to have uh, the volume that we do have for selection is, is really great. Um, but I think what we will see is a little bit of slowdown in the timeline of getting houses closed. I think that some of the larger investors um, that have been in our space um, ceasing their operations or, or putting them temporarily on hold um, is going to take a toll on, on some people being able to sell them as quick as they used to. Um, luckily for home investors, uh, we have not slowed up in our approach to home buying. It's just getting a little bit more creative on on how to get the information in the safest way possible. Now, I know you guys are able to take properties and really transform them from ugly homes into beautiful ones. We do have some before and after photos. But guys, just sort of break down the process for us. How does this all work? Because in a traditional sale where someone's putting their home on the market, they have to deal with realtor commissions, open houses, making the home available at all hours of the day, right, in case of a showing. Your process is completely different than that because it takes all of those headaches out of the equation. Well, it does take a lot of headaches out. It takes a lot of the hassles out. You know, the selling your house to, to home investors for, for a quick cash, no hassle sale is not for everyone, but let me tell you who it's for. You know, your house may need a lot of repairs for whatever reason. Maybe you need, you know, that security blanket around you for the unknowns of how long it's gonna take your buyer to close. Uh, we still go through a title company. That's your number one protection when you sell your house to home investors. We're going to go through a title company to protect you. That's what your your money's going to going to get to you through the title process. But there's other things, inspections. The mortgage can bust out of your new buyer. There's just so many things that can happen during this process. You know that can take from 30 days to 45 days to 60 days. Typically, our closes our closings are within three weeks. Um, uh, we're, we're not going to do a bait and switch on you. Uh, we're going to honor our, our offers. Uh, we're going to close so you can get on and have a have what, what I like to call a date that you can plan to arrange your movers and get on, you know, down the road to wherever you want to go. Interesting. Okay. And I know this is maybe a strange question. Does the house have to be really ugly? Like, does it have to re require a lot of repairs? Let's say there's someone out there who says, hey, I don't want to pay the realtor commission. I want to close in a few weeks and just get this, get this over with. Do you, you know, would that be a good I, option for them? You know, I, we get that question all the time, actually. Uh, the, the effectiveness of We Buy Ugly Houses has been so powerful for us. A lot of people ask that, but no, the, 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 the truth is we buy houses that are very poor condition. We buy pretty houses. We buy some newer model houses. It's really based on the motivation and the reasons of the seller of why they would want to um, listen to or, or, or have a investor come into their home to make them a, a cash as is offer for fast close. 
Well, guys, thank you so much for your time. And again, I just think it's fantastic that despite like, stay at home, some people still need to maybe move, take a job in another city. So it's great that you guys are providing this option. Eddie Gant, Ricky Williams Jr., we appreciate your time. And in the meantime, if you would like a home consultation or for more information about We Buy Ugly Houses, you can call 800-44-BUYER or you can visit them online, webuyuglyhouses.com. So easy to remember. All right, coming up next on Houston Life, if your kids are missing some of their favorite art studios while quarantined at home, Color Me Mine in Cyprus is offering to-go pottery paint kits. Lauren Kelly has the details on how to pick up a kit or have it delivered right to your home. That's coming up. Well, welcome back. You know, during this time at home for parents, you know, we've gotten very creative with the kids' art projects, but sometimes you might not have all the materials that you need, and that's where Color Me Mine in Cyprus is here to help. Yeah, this is like a next-level art project, right? Owner Clayton Harris joins Lauren Kelly to talk about their to-go pottery paint kits that come with everything your child needs to create their very own ceramic masterpiece. You know, one of my favorite things to do, one of my favorite memories as a younger kid was to go to one of the pottery paint classes and just paint my heart out, grab the paints, watch it dry. And even though I'm not a really great artist, I always felt like I was one. And Clayton Harris is the owner of Color Me Mine in Cyprus. You do have some at-home kits for kiddos to take home. So we're doing at-home kits. We're doing uh, doorstep delivery, and we're doing curbside pickup Tuesdays and Saturdays, noon to four. Um, so a lot of customers have been real happy. We our first day was uh, this past Saturday, and everybody was real happy about it. Had good customers. They're very happy to be doing something with the kids at the at the house, and so we're glad to offer this. And uh, so the staff's really eager to also see the customers. And that's one of the things we really, really miss is the customers in store. And so it's so fun to see everybody's pieces and their painting and stuff like that and the experience they're having. Uh, but we're also getting some good pictures and videos of people doing it at their house, which is nice to see. That's wonderful. I know it's almost like we're taking everybody at home with us. So it's like, hey, here's my office. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. So let's talk a little bit about what are inside of these Color Me Mind kits, like from start to finish, everything that you'd need as if you were inside the store. Yes, ma'am. Um, so you get online uh, through our website, cypress.colormemind.com, and uh, through the links, you can get to our online shop. And uh, you order your ceramic piece. Uh, you actually pick out your paint, and you can either, like I said, pick the delivery option, or you can pick up the uh, curbside option here in the store. And uh, you get home, you paint it, and then when you're done, uh, we also, we said we're letting people come back and drop the items off when we're open on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And then we glaze it, fire it, and just like normal, we contact everybody, tell them, hey, we're gonna be open these days, and you can pick up your finished items. So everything when it's finished is food safe, dishwasher safe, and waterproof. That was my question, Clayton. I know that in the past when I've gone, the final step is the glaze and it makes it nice and shiny. That's not something that you can do at your own house. That has no, to be taken back to you guys. Yes, ma'am. We have a, let's say, the staff is doing the backgrounds of that when uh, everything gets dropped off. They're coming in, glazing, firing uh, when we have enough product. And uh, so we're trying to get stuff out as conveniently and quickly as we possible, possibly can for everybody still. I noticed that on your website, you also have some downloadable coloring sheets, which is such a great idea. Maybe your kid isn't old enough to do mm -hmm. the painting yet. Maybe they'd like to just download something to color on, and that's just for free as well on the website. You download that, you print it out, and you can color that as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, like I said, I'm, I'm, I, per, I personally have a seven-year-old, so she gets tired of painting all the stuff in the <laughs> shop. So we've been doing coloring sheets and other stay-at-home activities, safe for everybody at their house if they don't want to partake uh, in our ceramic pieces. We know right now some some people is financially strained, and uh, we do we still want to offer something that people are able to do in their house, which is a little different. That's so wonderful. And you know what? You don't have to be a kid to paint. You can order absolutely as an not. adult. It's for anybody. Yeah, absolutely not. Right now, I'm actually personally working on what I call a dudicorn. And, uh, a so, unicorn. Yes, ma'am. So it's a unicorn and it's got a blue head and the hair is actually going to be fire color. Oh, that is super dude. <laughs> yeah, so, so I have a bunch of unicorns and they're all white with blue and pink and stuff like that. And I was like, man, I need a dude of corn. Now, 
what's been the most popular piece people have come in to pick up? Uh, the, most, the most popular piece right now is probably the unicorns. Yeah, unicorn, and we're going to make that dudicorn just That's as popular. It. <laughs> it. And then maybe you can add the manmosa or something? I don't know, yeah. just, just spitballing. <laughs> so I joke that I, my, out of all the shelves we have in the store, my wife lets me have one shelf. Oh, so, that's that's very generous of her. Yes. So that's my dude shelf. It's got skulls and dragons on it. <laughs> well, the dudes really do appreciate it. Yes. Clayton Harris, you and your wife, the owner of Color Me Mine in Cyprus. It's great fun for the whole family. If you'd ever wanted to paint these pottery pieces, now's definitely the time to take it home and work on it as a family. You can either get it delivered to your house. I'm sure if you're in the area, the vicinity, or you can also take the kids to go. More information online at HoustonLife.tv. Lauren, thank you so much. That was so great. And also to hear from Clayton too. And what a great idea to be able to work on something like this at home, get the whole family involved, I like his dude shelf. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think so as well. My nieces and I, uh, they, they took, well, Brandon and me, they took us together to do uh, a whole project, and we had such a good time. It was a great memory. And now we have a little ceramic cupcake at home to use as a piggy bank. So we love that so idea. Cute. We should, Courtney, point out to our viewers that with the governor's retail update yesterday, Color Me Mine will now start allowing customers back inside starting next Tuesday, May 5th. Just click on HoustonLife.tv for info on updated store hours and how you can book your appointments online. We'll be right back. Tomorrow on Houston Life, we are learning more about mochi donuts. Look at those, how delicious they look. Christine Wynn, the owner of Sugarland Bakery, The Sweet Boutique, you may remember her. She competed on Food Network's Spring Baking Championship, where she baked their now famous mochi donuts. And folks, those donuts have actually helped that business stay afloat during the COVID-19 pandemic. So Courtney, I'm gonna do my best to get some hands on some of those. Mm. I'll bring you some, I'll socially distant drop off. How about that? You better. I'm counting on that. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs>